Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a full face of first impressions. It's kind of like a mini drugstore haul. Well, no, it, it is a mini drugstore haul, but I'm also going to be trying out the products as I'm showing you what I got, and it's a good one. We definitely have some hits and misses, and I honestly, I would love it for you guys to leave me comments down below letting me know if there's anything else new at the drugstore that you really want me to test out and try. I've been dying to try out some new drugstore makeup, like get back into the drugstore lifestyle. So if there's anything new out there besides the products I mentioned today, leave them in the comments below and I will definitely check them out. But anyway, let's get started on this look. Okay, here we go. I already got my little clippies on, so my hair is not on my face. Got these on Amazon, by the way. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dive into my face. I don't have a new primer to test out. Actually, I do. I have a primer right here, but I'm not gonna test it out with the foundation I'm gonna try because I really wanna see how I feel about this foundation and I'm scared this is going to affect it. By the way, I'm filming this video. It's 10 p.m. and I'm usually attempting to snuggle up in bed at this time, so I'm very tired, but also in the mood to film. So this is the Makeup Revolution Liquid Powder Pore Blurring Makeup Serum, and I gotta be honest, I don't even know why I bought this. This doesn't look like something I would like at all. This is the Makeup Priming Serum that dries down to a powdered effect. Why? Supports skin hydration, okay, that's nice. Whilst helping to mattify Mattify and blur pores. I honestly, I don't know why I got it. Did I get it because it was cute? I want to say that's why I purchased it. I don't know. I'm gonna test it out with like a really dewy foundation. I'll see. Maybe it's a good combination with something that's like extra, extra dewy. I don't know, but I bought that. I actually already added primer to my skin. Well, it's not primer, it's a moisturizer. Just to prime my skin a little bit before going in with foundation. And the foundation I just picked up is the Revlon Color Stay. This is actually really exciting because the original Revlon Color Stay was the first foundation I ever tried out. It felt like the first time I was falling in love with makeup because I was just applying it to my skin with a little white makeup sponge, might I add those little white triangle thingies. I was applying it with that and I was like, wait, this is amazing. This is covering everything. So I have a little spot in my heart for the original Color Stay, and this is the Color Stay Light Cover Foundation. That sounds incredible. You know I'm all about that. It says it has a natural finish, SPF 35, and it gives you 12 hour wear. The original Color Stay is super long wearing, very full coverage, and just a lot more intense. So I'm very curious to see how this looks. All right, so you know the drill. I'm gonna be testing this out with a brush and a damp sponge. And I actually just bought this sponge. This is the e.l.f. Total Face Sponge. You can use it wet or dry. I mean, who's using this dry? Who at home is using a beauty blender or a sponge or a makeup sponge dry? I'm not judging. I'm just genuinely curious. But I don't know if it was a TikTok or something where I heard Nicole Concilio talking about this sponge and she was saying how much she loved it. And I was like, I, th I haven't tried that. So I picked it up and I just ran it underwater. It's nice and fat and ready for use. So I'm gonna go in with the shade 220. It looks like it's a little bit too pink for me, but the other color is a little too light for me. So hopefully this works. I'm gonna go in with my brush first. I don't know how much to use. We'll just build up. Why do you build me up? Buttercup, baby, just let me down. And mess me around, and then worst of all, you never call, baby, when you say you will. This is not my color. But I love you still, I need you. More than anyone, darling. It's a little bit like pale pink. This shade, a little off, but the finish is looking really nice. I feel like it has light to medium coverage. I thought the coverage was gonna be lighter, but actually it's covering up a lot. And I really, really like how it's applying with the brush. I guess because it is so sheer and lightweight, it blends really nicely into the skin with this brush. Which by the way, this is from Liss Beauty um, and it's their foundation brush. It's really cute. I like it cause it's pink, much like this foundation. <laughs> Man, the color of this is so throwing me off. I definitely need a deeper shade. Looks can be deceiving. All right, let's go in with the sponge. It's still applying really nicely with the sponge, of course, but it does sheer it out a bit and you definitely get less coverage. But I mean, that's a given. But in terms of finish, both sides look exactly the same. So I feel like even if you have dry skin, you would like the brush. In fact, I'm gonna hit up another layer with the brush. It's funny, because when I was looking at 
all the stuff I purchased from like the drugstore and Ulta and stuff. I was like, damn, I think the concealer I bought is going to be a little bit too deep for me. And now I'm very concerned since my foundation is a little bit too light for me. My skin actually looks really, really good. Besides that color, the finish is very natural, but the coverage is still pretty good. And it doesn't feel too tacky. This feels extremely natural. It has a very, very natural finish. I'm into it. I'm into it. I'm going to buy another shade. But I'm into it. Okay, so for concealer, this is so weird. The other day, Gabby was doing my makeup for the Light Sacker Spring Shoot, and she was using this concealer, and I was like, oh, that's the e.l.f. Um, camo 16 hour wear concealer, and she's like, yeah, but the hydrating one. And I was like, the hydrating one? I didn't know that e.l.f. came out with a hydrating version of the camo concealer. I looked through all of my concealers and I couldn't find a hydrating one because I was like, wait, did I know that? Do I own it? And I couldn't find it anywhere. So I went and I picked it up and I am very excited to use this because I love the original camo concealer. So I could just imagine. Um, the only thing is I definitely got the wrong shade. I got light sand, which seems to be even deeper than my foundation. So I hope it works. But besides this, I also bought this e.l.f. concealer. This is the Flawless Brightening Concealer. So, I mean, we can do a little mixer here if this is too dark, which I know it will be. This is also pretty interesting because I've been wanting a kind of like a YSL to Chiclot. You remember that? That was on and popping back in the YouTube beauty days. I wanted something similar to that, something that I can use to like highlight and brighten under the eyes. So I'm curious to see how um, this works. I got mine in the shade Fair 15W. Why is it that with these things you never know how much is too much until it's too much? But all right, let's see. Oh. oh my gosh, for some reason, guys, I'm not even kidding that. The, the second I smelled that, an old Y2K hair gel just popped into my head. Do you remember that old school hair gel that was like jelly? Like it actually looked like jelly and, oh man, I can't describe it, but it was like orange <laughs> and see-through. You know what? Never mind, but that smelled just like it. Actually, the shade is not terrible if, well, definitely darker than my foundation, but if my foundation was the right shade, we'd be good. I'm loving this coverage. Really good coverage. I'm definitely gonna have to use that with a different foundation because I kind of see the darkness around my eyes now. But have no fear. Flawless Brightening Concealer is here. Let's brighten this under eye. Well, I'm gonna look like Casper today. Okay, better, much better. In terms of brightening, I feel like that concealer worked really well too. It has good coverage, my under eyes don't look dry at all. And I'm gonna play around with it more and use it with a different foundation, like I've said 7,000 times, and then I'll make my decision. But so far it looks good, except you know what? My foundation is starting to look a little bit dry and it's only been sitting on my face for like five seconds. It's like looking dry around my nose here. That's interesting. All right, that's weird. Really quickly, I'm going to jump off camera and apply my bronzer because I don't have a new bronzer that I purchased and apply a little bit of eyeshadow because I don't have a new palette or anything like that. And I will be right back. Okay, I don't know about you, but something is going down on my face. I don't know if it was the concealer. I don't know if it was the combination of this brightening one with this one that is that could definitely be a possibility or if it's my foundation, but it looks really dry right here. Let me show you. Can you guys see how it's like separated here? Like there's a gap right here and then all of this looks like flaky and dry. Can you see that? Honestly, I'm not sure you could even see it on camera, but I can see it and I don't love how that looks. But again, I don't know who to place the blame on. So I definitely need to use that foundation and those concealers completely separate and then I'll see who the culprit is. Also, as I'm applying my bronzer, I don't know if it's because this foundation is lighter than my natural skin tone, like it's lighter than I usually go for, but I felt like I had to blend out my bronzer even more than I usually do. Like it took me a minute to put my bronzer on, honestly. It was looking like extra pigmented in certain spots, like it wasn't super easy to blend. I don't know, guys, I'm scared. I don't know if I'm gonna like this foundation. I don't know, and I'm getting worried because I love Revlon Color Stay. I don't know, we'll see. I will say, halfway through applying my bronzer, I realized, oh my gosh, I was supposed to apply some cream blush and I probably shouldn't have added my 
powder bronzer yet before adding my cream blush but I did but that's okay because we're still gonna put it on even though it might not look the best why not we're already here but before I even do that I'm gonna apply a little bit of eyeliner I didn't buy a new eyeliner but I bought a new eyeliner brush <laughs> this is from elf this is the precision preci preci precision the Cuban and me can never say that and precision eyeliner brush looks like this and honestly I just want to see if I can do a nice little wing with it I'm gonna take my Inglot gel eyeliner in the shade 89 it's like a deep cocoa brown and I'm just gonna do a little wing this looks like it has a very sharp point which I like This is a pretty good brush, if you ask me. The person using the brush, not not that skilled. But the actual brush, a winner. We've got a winner here, folks. Okay, so I didn't use black eyeliner because I wanted to test out a new mascara. And I knew adding black eyeliner was going to make it impossible for you to see my lashes. But I'm starting to realize this brown one is pretty dark as well. Also, they're so uneven, it's not even funny. This one is way lower. It's a, Ignore that. It's late, but okay, I have two mascaras. Well, I picked up three of them, but one of them is just an oldie but a goodie. Do you remember the telescopic carbon black mascara from L'Oreal? I haven't used it in years. This reminds me so much of Carly Bible, like instantly. This was like her OG mascara, but I got these two. This one I got because it went super viral on TikTok, I think. This is the Maybelline Sky High mascara, but I also got this one because it just looked really interesting. This is the... L'Oreal Unlimited Mascara. Up to 24 hours. Oh, instant lift for 24 hours. For some reason I thought it was waterproof, I was gonna cry. I'm gonna test out this one on this eye and then this one on this eye. But of course, of course, we have to curl the lashes. Oh, I got a little bit of uh, glitter on my eyeliner from <laughs> my eyelash curler, but that's okay. It added a little pizzazz. I'm kind of surprised to see this type of wand. I don't know why, but I am. I usually prefer like natural bristles versus these like plasticky ones, but can't judge a book by its cover. It's actually looking pretty nice. It's really lengthening the lashes. Wow, that looks pretty freaking good, especially since I have eyeliner on. Let's see if L'Oreal can beat you, Maybelline. I'm not sure it will though because this baby didn't go viral on TikTok and only the good go viral on TikTok. What is that? We've got another plasticky situation here. This one's a little bit more of a carrot shape. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Don't they look different? Don't they look like this one is a little bit like longer? I don't know. Oh my god, what is this? Wait, what's happening? Oh my gosh. All right. Helps you get all up in there when you bend it, I guess. Yeah, I can see that. But you know what I'm noticing? I like the whole um, Megatron bumblebee thing that it just did. But it's making my lashes a lot thicker than these in like a clumpy way, not in a volumized way. I'm actually gonna run this brush through it. See, these look a little bit more wispy and like thin. I definitely prefer this mascara. So the verdict, I absolutely love this Maybelline Sky High mascara. It is so good. It's the mascara I used on my lower lash line and I feel like it made them look so long and thick. I tried to save this eye with this mascara, but this one is still a little bit more clumpy, spidery. So I added another layer on this side to try to even them out. And even with three coats on this, it wasn't as thick as this. This is a really, really, really great mascara. This one I'm gonna have to pass on. I'm gonna have to pass on Megatron over here. All right, so let's try out this elf putty blush that I hope looks okay, even though I already have powder on my face. I saw, again, Nicole Concilio <laughs> mentioned these blushes the other day. Um, she was comparing them to the Fenty Beauty cream blushes. She said that they were dupes. So that's very exciting. I cannot wait to try one on. I'm gonna use this shade, of course, the peachiest color. So these blushes are infused with argan oil and vitamin E, and they are lightweight and buildable putty to powder blushes that blend seamlessly into the skin. So uh, let's see. I do love me the cream blushes from Fenty. All right, this is the shade Turks and Caicos. I'm gonna take my elf sponge. 
Flip it on the other side and go right into the blush. You know what? This is very much a cream to powder finish because it's not looking too dewy at all. You know what? I'm gonna use a brush. I'm gonna use a brush. I'm not gonna use this because this formula is a little bit tricky. If it was more dewy and sheer, I would use this. I'm gonna go ahead and use another one of these list brushes. Just blending that on the back of my hand before going in. Actually, I'm gonna try the sponge. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I feel like the fact that I applied my bronzer is messing with the formula a bit. Like it's looking a little bit patchy in certain areas, but honestly, that could also be this foundation. It's looking so patchy and dry around my nose and I think that might be it. But the color itself is really pretty, like the color of this blush. The finish is very natural and it's not too, too pigmented. You do have to build this up a bit, but I kind of like that. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how I feel. I need to use this with a different base and without applying powder bronzer first and then I'll know for sure but there's definitely potential but all right I got three other shades in the putty blush by the way I got Tahiti Bora Bora and Bali very exciting really quickly though I'm gonna take my Clinique Lunar Pop highlight I'm just adding a little bit of this to the very tippity tops of my cheekbones and my nose of course this foundation also looks a little weird on my nose can you guys leave me a comment down below have you tried this foundation do you like it? Okay, we are almost done. I got five of these. I don't know why I got five. I should have probably got, I probably should have just gotten one and then tested out the formula to see if I even like these. But I got a little crazy. I bought like four nudes and a hot, bright red orange. <laughs> this is literally like what's on my lips at all times, either a nude or, or a color like this. But all right, these are the Revlon Colorstay Satin Ink Lip Colors. And I was swatching one of them on the back of my hand. They feel very creamy and moussey, kind of like a regular lipstick, but I think it leaves behind a bit of a stain. I'm gonna take this shade right here called Eyes On You and I'm gonna pop that on. But really quickly, let me throw on my lip liner. I'm taking the RMS daytime nude lip liner. Okay, here we go. The doe foot applicator looks like this. I like them like this. I really do. So it feels like a regular lipstick, like a creamy, luminous lipstick. I wonder how it wears. Maybe it gets a little bit drier and it mattifies the longer it's on my lips. Well, it says satin ink, so it probably gives you like a very natural finish. It feels like it's getting there. It's becoming less luminous and creamy now. Check your teeth. I like it. Feels nice. I better like it. I bought five of them. Okay, so we are pretty much done with the haul. I do have a couple more products that I bought that I didn't try on my face. So the first thing is this, and I'm very excited for this. I'm actually doing a whole video tomorrow, like a full wear test and first impressions and all of that. This is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear powder foundation. It says it has full matte coverage and it is waterproof, which is very exciting. This bad boy went completely viral on TikTok and I couldn't find it anywhere, honestly. I had to get this shit on Amazon. What the internet will do. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I don't even know if I got my right shade. This is 120 vanilla. It looks like it's gonna be too light for me, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, okay? I have limited options. So I'm gonna test this out tomorrow. I don't know which video will be up first, but stay tuned for that. I also picked up this Essence blush in the shade Befitting. I actually love these Essence blushes. They're very, very creamy and they apply really nicely. And these are like $2, guys. Very, very cheap, very, very good. And I didn't have this color. It's a very pretty everyday mauve. And then last but not least, I got these Ardell Falsies. I'm very excited for these. These are magnetic naked lashes, which you just have to use with your magnetic liquid liner. I already have mine from Glamnetic, so I'm very excited to try these because they look very wispy and natural. And then I got another set of naked lashes, only these are not magnetic, they're just regular naked lashes. And I haven't tried this naked lashes range from Ardell, but they look really wispy and natural, so 
Okay, that completes this video guys. That was everything I recently got from the drugstore. I hope you enjoyed this full face of first impressions. Just to do a little mini recap. I'm not so sure how I feel about these putty blushes or this concealer or either of the concealers because I just have a feeling this foundation did not work for me. If you look at my skin up close, like it looks really pretty, but it kind of looks like it's just sitting on top of my skin and my skin looks a bit dry and I really don't like that. I don't like that. I don't know. I don't know if this is good for me. I don't know if I liked it which is a bummer. The Sky High Mascara though, excellent. You need to check it out. And I will get back to you on the concealers. I will get back to you. But okay guys, that's it. That completes this video. I love you guys so, so, so much. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye.